Hello. This is the first time I've seen people in 28 months. Hello. Talk about like distractions and hard to just sink in and just do the job. Um, I'm just so glad and so truly, truly grateful to be here. I really, really am. I understand you. <laughs> Before I got into wellness, I worked, I like to say I served 12 years in the music business. Marketing, promotions, PR, mainly hip hop, mainly men uh, in Toronto and in Los Angeles. So I understand the pace, the pressure of what it happens when you become the commodity, when you have to create under pressure. And the inspo's not really happening. So I really, really get that. And I was so drawn into speaking to this group because I have seen what that pressure can do and what it can, what it can undo. I have seen firsthand, because I, in my past life, I've worked with like rappers and athletes and just at the highest level of celebrity. Genius, really, the like genius. But at that pace and that pressure, it's real stress. Stress is stress. And I often say like the experience might be different, but the feeling is the same. And I have seen that stress cripple the, the brilliance with anxiety, just feel like there's an apathy because now the work is like another thing I have to do. Feeling like I just can't move because I'm not really proud of the thing that I'm creating. Uh, I get that and I get what it means to have to show up again and again and for people to be like, you're so lucky to get to do this. You're like, yeah, it really feels lucky. So this slide, just because you carry it well doesn't mean it's not heavy. That weight is so different for all of us and we're just going to talk a little bit about how do I know when the weight has gotten too much and not waiting until it's breaking my back. Because the idea of what we're in in this new time is that we have really a new opportunity just to level set. No one's coming to help us out. It's us. I've, I've waited. I looked. No one's coming. And so we're in an opportunity. We have the experience. We have the timing. We're of the age of like we can change what it means to do our best living and working in a way that integrates, that works for us and not just works for the work. Does that make sense? So, in our time together, I really want to take some time to do a few things. One, we're going to impact, like, what does that stress start to look like? Like, how do I know? Um, and we're going to do that by looking at two main things. There's self-awareness and then the self-management. And when I say self, I mean, like, you know, you hear self-care and self-esteem, but self, like your soul, your essence, your, your one of one, just, just you. When the door is closed and can you hear yourself think? Can I hear myself think above the noise, the chatter, the notifications, the, all of it? Your mom, the critic, the ego. Can I hear myself anymore? That's, that's the work that creatives need now, and we need creatives now more than we ever, ever have. And so it's really tapping into that self-awareness and then this is the self-management. The awareness is paying attention to really key, three key things. It's the thoughts and feelings, the body sensations, and the physical environment. So when I'm feeling stressed or when I'm at rest, like what's happening? The mental chatter before I have to log into a meeting. Hey, yeah, no, I'm good. What's happening in the, in the body alarm bells, the tummy drop, the tight in the neck, the, the fidgeting, the hot face, just to pay attention. And then the physical environment. When you're stressed or at rest, what's working for you? Is it crowds? Is it day? Is it night? Is it, you know, even this, in the summer and the seasons, uh, for many of us in this part of the world, winter can be a difficult season. So all the more reason to pay paying attention and you do more to get through that season. So that's the self-awareness. The self-management is now, now that I've paid attention to it, what do I do? When it comes to my attitude, my behavior, and my performance. What's happening and where is it sh starting to show up? And our time together is to start noticing. And noticing is the word. That's, it's the gateway to mindfulness. When I'm just paying attention to one thing on purpose, when I start to notice, that's the opportunity just to do something different. 
So this is, this is a safe space. <laughs> I am not here to, to should on you. I should do this, I should know better, I should stop that. No shooting on ourselves, not here. We have work to do, but when we have the same tools and the same language, now this becomes normal and we can normalize it for each other in our work and start to check each other when things feel a little off. So let's get into some tools. So this is one I really, really like to use this feelings wheel because when it comes to the question, how are you today? At certain points in this washing machine called life of the global pandemic, that has been a very difficult question to answer. And when we notice, right, the thoughts and feelings, body sensation, when I respond with, yeah, I'm fine, like way, way up top, yeah, I'm good. I'm not, br I'm not breathing. That's what's happening. And so if I'm leading you, I can't gather all the context needed to make a decision or to delegate. Like, can you actually handle what it is? Like, I'm really only working with the information given. And in a remote environment where we lack relational awareness, like, I can kind of feel what's going on. If you say you're fine, I'm like, girl, no, you're not. Because I can just feel you. Without that, I have to be getting as much context as possible. So the way to use this tool is to start in the center and you work your way out. So in the center would be like a base level emotion. The way you would explain your feelings to a child. Okay, pretty simple. But if I say I'm angry, like there's a lot of different kinds of angry, which will take a different tool to solve. You know, someone who is humiliated and someone who is numb, while they're rooted in the same place, it's going to take a different tool to get out of there. So we have to be, have the practice to give and gather that context. So when someone asks, how are you? I'm not suggesting you open your diary and say everything, but you can take a moment and just think about it and offer a genuine answer in, with the intention that's the context, so that I'm just giving you what it is you need to know, just where I'm at, versus me trying to adjust where I think you need me to be today, and then holding my breath, hoping that that's the right place to be, because it's not. Does this make sense? So when looking at this, also be, be curious. Know that you know, duality says two seemingly opposing things can exist at the same time. So while I'm angry, I can also feel like surprised. So sometimes like nervous and excited can feel the same in the body. If you're, if you're going into something new, you might feel nervous, but there's excited there. So it's also taking a moment just to see what else could be happening. What, what else could be going on here, and just approach it with some curiosity. So a tool like this is helpful, like I have just up on the fridge, because I have nine-year-old twins, and everything's fine or good, or like all of the feelings on the wheel. So this is helpful for me to also give them the context, because this, this pandemic, this time, I've never, I've never done this before. And I have to be very honest, like, I'm, I'm feeling a little scared, or I'm, I'm actually, I'm really overwhelmed. And here's what will be helpful for me today. And I can say that to my leads, but it's on me to give that information. I can't assume that someone's gonna know, especially when I'm a tile on a screen. And as a creative person, we're tied so closely to these feelings and emotions. None of these are, ba are bad, it's just all information. So give people the information. Because what we can be battling through is assumptions. And for all of us, for so many reasons, assumptions can be very, very harmful. Could you see yourself using a tool like this? Super simple, but just thinking about it. So who can, who can help me out? How, how are you today? Looking at the wheel, who could shout it out? Let's hear from two people. I already told you I'm just happy to be in another room aside from my own. <laughs> but how are you today? Also happy? And if you panned out there, what else is there? Interested, curious, inquisitive. Can we see how that gives more information than happy? It's, it just gives a little bit more. And what we want, we, we're in a place that we can give a little bit more. And that comes right back to us as far as the information I need when we're working with each other, at least so I can have a level set of where folks are at. So I'm hoping that this tool is helpful. So I'm happy. Let's hear from one more person. 
are you doing? Happy, confident, and valued. Very nice, right? So when it comes to the energy, like the feelings wheel is to really practice that. And now we've got a sense of how to do this. This is the energy management. Okay, so when it comes to that physical energy, we have a sense of what's working and what's not. I talked a bit about the awareness, what's happening to thoughts and feelings. Like we know when we're burned out. I know when I'm kind of hitting my stride. I know when I'm feeling good. But with this tool, and this comes from the book, uh, The Way We Work Isn't Working, um, by, oh, Tony, last name, slide, no, I can't remember his name. But it's very good. Tony Schwartz. Thanks. Thanks, brain. Uh, Dr. Tony Schwartz put this together. And so the way to use this tool is on the quadrant. So on the right-hand side, on, on my right-hand side, that performative zone, think of that's where I want to be when, when I'm feeling my best. When I'm locked in, I'm in the zone, I'm in the flow, that's when I'm performing. Now, underneath there, we want performance and recovery to run in tandem. So think about a physical athlete. There's an off-season for a reason. You take breaks for a reason, because if you don't, on a physical level, you can undermine your performance, risk injury, you know, undermine the entire team, perhaps be out for the whole season because I didn't take a break. So I really want you to be thinking about that recovery time. It's not instead of the work, it's in order to do it. It's in order to do the work. So we have to flip it a little bit about how we re reframe how we get work done now. So I perform, I do the thing, and then I have time to recover. But if I perform too long without recovery, I'm gonna move into a survival zone. Just a gentle snap of your fingers. If you found yourself in the survival zone, let's say in the last 18 months. <laughs> but when we lack that relational awareness, when I can't tell what anyone else is going through, it can be normal. I can just normalize it. And then I medicate it with drugs, food, alcohol, shopping, you, you name it, because I just need to feel better or something or less of that. So that's what that survival zone is. Performing too long without recovery puts me in survival. Survival too long without recovery, burnout is a matter of time. And the World Health Organization has recently deemed burnout as a mental health condition. Snap your fingers again if you have felt burnout in the last 18 months. Absolutely normalized, absolutely normalized. And those who know, know that burnout is, takes a long time to get out just to get back to normal, just to get back to zero. So the tools that I'm offering, it's not, again, it's not a bad place, but you have to know that the, the difference between feeling depressed and hopeless, they're going to take a different tool as if you're exhausted and empty. So really be honest with yourself. Looking back at the past season, the past two seasons of like what's the pattern, attitude, behavior, performance, just for that own awareness so that you can give yourself the tools to be like, okay, this is where I'm at and here's the things I need to do to start pulling myself out. And at least so that I'm going burnout to recovery because what I'll often see is performance to burnout. I give all that I can give and then I got nothing left. And it's often to the people closest to us that we have nothing left for. And the people who love you would be very upset if they knew you were running yourself into the ground for them. Very upset. Stress kills. It absolutely does. So thinking about this quadrant and knowing that so many of us are going from that performance to survival, let's just talk a little bit about how we can start getting more into the integration of that recovery space. So this tool, this like energy management, is great to check in if you have someone new on the team, just seeing where you're at. It's just, just where are you at, knowing that this has been a difficult time, people's capacity is not at 100%, and like a physical, like an athlete, if you had an injury and didn't fully recover, you risk making it worse. And I'm seeing a lot of that. Oh, it's back to normal? Here you go. It's like, hey, hang on. We can't forget what we have just been through. And so it's on us to normalize like what the need is, what the capacity is, and how I can still do the work. But this is how I recover in order to get it done. That's the difference. So I want us to just take a moment to really just honor what it is that's working. 
because all of you got dressed today and you're all here. And so there's tools that are working that you never feel worse after. And so we're gonna start building a foundation from that place. So we're gonna repeat and complete. I never feel worse after I, what? Just shout it out. Shower, coffee, exercise, quite a few folks. Play with my dog, play with my kids. And remember, you may not feel better. You might not feel better after you exercise. I often say the hardest part about working out is putting on my shoes, <laughs> but I never feel worse. So know that you are doing things that are working. Please be gentle with yourself wherever you found yourself on that quadrant. And if burnout's where you're at, then that's where you're at. But know you're doing things that are working and let's just work what's working. So we'll start from there. Many folks said physical things, but start thinking again about what do I do emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and do I have time to just not do those things? There's seven types of rest, like there's social rest, can you just step away? The emotional rest, the spiritual rest, and a creative rest. Can, do you have other tools in the box to reach for? Just to give that one a break. So what's happening for so many of us, we're hitting a place called surge capacity. Just the machine's just been running too hot too long. That's fine, that's what needs to be done, but I need, even a machine needs to be unplugged after a while, but not just unplugged, but off and cool. So just leave it alone, and again, it's in order to do that work. So here's a bit of a permission slip. Okay, it's at the bottom of the screen here. Because of, insert the stressor of your choice, I have permission to, the coping mechanism that's working for you, dog, exercise, shower, coffee, friends, et cetera, et cetera, in order to get this work done, show up for my kids, get a good night's sleep, whatever that is. And I understand it's that permission piece that can be so challenging often for high achievers, high achieving women, high achieving women of color, high achieving people of color, that permission isn't always given. We weren't always raised by people who were raised by people with that permission. So that's another talk for another time with tears and sweets, but the permission slip, I am giving it to you today. And when you start practicing that, honestly, for a season, just give it some time, and just like noticing the chatter, noticing the body language, noticing it's three o'clock and I haven't eaten yet, or that the house looks like it's been robbed, take a beat, give yourself permission to just sidebar it in order to, and it's not instead of, not anymore. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I think this is the attitude check where so many of us are at. And tired can be, mean very different things for all of us. There's emotionally tired, and there's creatively tired, and then there's just mentally tired. And it's important, again, back to that wheel, to be able to name it. And sometimes naming it, it just takes a minute to sit in it, to be like, where am I at? Like, like really? Have I, let's, let's think of the last two weeks of, of the news, of external. H has that just blown past me? Have I had time to recover from anything in this past while? and moving in, what's happening outside, what's happening in my home, in my work, with myself. Have I taken just a minute to like adjust to that? You have absolute permission, absolute permission in order to do what needs to be done. I really wanna give that to you today. And it can look so different for all of us. It can look like doing nothing. It can look like the Netflix and, and sleep and the drool, those, that's part of it too. Remember when the seed is planted, there's a time that looks like nothing is happening, but that's when everything is happening. So please be gentle on yourselves as we re-enter society and that pace and pressure, be really honest about what your capacity is now and adjust accordingly as to what you need, but also what you require to show up and to do the work that's being asked of you. These are my requirements and stick up for yourself Stick up for yourself in order to do that. So here I've got just a few things that you can choose from, okay? When we're thinking about how can I start, you know, prioritizing or integrating some of these things. And I just want you just to get back to basics. So many of these tools are things that we had often used to do. And there might be something on here that you need to explore. 
you know, knowing that there's a difference between, you know, many of us have been isolated in this time, but we can, I want you to be really clear on there's isolation, there's loneliness, and then there's solitude. I can feel alone next to someone in bed. Being, feeling alone is I'm with people, but I don't feel like anyone's with me. Isolation is, means I have the opportunity to be with others, but I've, I've pushed them a, away. So I'm choosing to be alone. Solitude is the choice of like, no, I, I need to be with myself now. There's intentional solitude, intentional silence. So I can hear myself think and just let it all settle down. My, my daughters have like glitter and water and I'm just like, just chill out and like wait till the glitter settles. So let all the noise and emails and chatter, like let it all distill. And so while that could be part of your working day, that could look like a bike ride, that could look like puttering the garden, that could look like doing the dishes, but the mental space is happening, so just letting it settle. So again, just reframe some of those activities just so you can get your thoughts together and then show up differently. We need to give ourselves a little bit more latitude than perhaps we were used to before the pandemic. So think of something on here. Sex is also on the list, I just wanted to say. Because when it comes to it, there's also, again, isolation. We can, we can do the things that used to feel good. We'll just stop pushing them away. Like there's a connection, the social connection. It's very important to receive good feelings, receive a compliment, receive praise, receive credit, like celebrate everything. <laughs> we all said, once this pandemic's over, I'm going into every single thing. Like, can you just celebrate the small wins, the small victories? They really, they really add up of just a simple acknowledgement. So I want you to think of a few things that perhaps it's been a while since you've done and what perhaps you have a chance to revisit. And to do this, we're gonna start creating some rituals. So rituals essentially a group of three. Think of a group of three activities. So going back to that list, you know, what, what do I like to do mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually? Uh, what activates my senses? My sight, sense, t sound, like back to basics. Get that bar real low <laughs> and then crush that bar. So think about three things that you could do as far as like a morning boost, like an afternoon kind of breather, and even an evening wind down. Because I know for myself, I've just been standing on the spot and so it doesn't feel normal. Like the days have blurred, there's nothing to mark anything else, but those rituals are an opportunity just to check in. And once you start combining them with three, then you've got these like feel good feelings, you get more. You get more out of that 15 minutes or, f or five minutes. I'm talking small, small things. So if it's, I like to think of it when I wake, when I eat, when I work, and when I sleep. Those are my natural segues in the day. So when I wake up, check in. How did I feel? Did I sleep well? Am I hungover? Did I, eat? did I even eat last night? So just to check in versus up, open, phone, oh, like I do <laughs> so many mornings. And it's just looking at that ritual so that then what happens when I get an, a hit of these feel good feelings, three of them, now my brain starts to like that. Now I'm in a rhythm of like, oh, my shower time, because I'm using a nice towel and I have the music and I'm using like my fancy scrubs, now that shower is a little more rejuvenating for myself versus a like thing I have to do. So I want you to start thinking of that. When it comes to that care, what are the small ways, but again, in a ritual that you can do it so it just, it feels a little more special. It's something, again, you're giving it to yourself and that's the idea. And this takes practice. You know, the idea of a wellness practice, it's, um, if, if health is the goal, you know, mental health, physical health, then wellness, it's steps in the road. It's steps in the road to reach the goal. I like to think of it as like laying a foundation, like, like bricks in a road. And so it's not, it's not the bubble bath or the face mask that saves you, it is the acknowledgement of self. I know I need something and I'm giving it to myself. That, that is revolutionary. That is much harder to do and it takes practice and to give ourselves permission. If it was easy, everyone would do it. So give yourself that permission.
take it very, very slow, and simply just remember that, that mantra of like, just from this moment on, you know, life is moment to moment to moment to moment. So if you need to take a moment to just like regather and calibrate so you can redetermine for the next one to be better with the new information that you've got, the new awareness, what's really going on, that changes it because autopilot is I'm just moving through and I haven't really stopped to think about it. And when we continue to react, that's, we're gonna continue to get more of that. So simple practices, simple reframes, but again, start tomorrow tools. And how it hits and how it lands and how it's been difficult for all of us is different. It's all different, but be honest and gentle with yourself in that intentional solitude, in that intentional silence, and get in the practice to heal yourself think so that you can bring the very best of yourself to the party.